Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're going to take a look at the Peg Stamp called Eden. And um, you can check this out from our sponsor, pegstamps.com. Make sure to look in the video description because I'll have a link to the set plus a coupon code that will save you some money on your purchase. But I really like this stamp set because it is, um, it's got kind of a homey, um, fall-like fruits and vegetables, and I just think it's really pretty if you want to do place cards or maybe stamp on a picture frame or just make some happy Thanksgiving cards. It's actually a really good all-around set, but I find these vegetables really remind me of fall with the pomegranate and the, um, I think it's a garlic, but I think you could, you could stamp it like a fig as well, and there's an olive. Um, it's just really pretty. So I had the idea to do some place cards today, and, um, and what I'm going to do is just fold a piece of cardstock on the back so it will stand up. But um, I played a little bit with um, making kind of like a wreath, like we do, you know how we do. And I came up with a few versions, and the version I really liked the best is that one. But what I was really um, trying to get the hang of was using a marker to emboss so that we could get really uh, pretty shiny letters in the middle. And that way, if you end up having a long name and you end up going over some of the background stuff, it'll still show up. So I think that's kind of fun. And then I also use the Eden stamp stamp set with um, the basket. What I did was I stamped it and I masked it. Then I stamped some of the garlic in there or figs, whatever you want it to be, and then some veggies and um, foliage around just to kind of see how that would work as a focal point on a card. Um, in addition to using the stamp set for like a wreath or a, a place card, just so you have a little more versatility. I like to share stuff like that. So the first thing we're going to do is our stamping, and I've just got this little die cut um, label. I think it was a Spellbinders die uh, from my stash. And I'm going to begin with my largest item, which is the pomegranate, and I'm stamping that up uh, with rhubarb stock from Memento. It's just a nice, really rich, deep red. And I'm going to slightly turn my stamp each time I stamp it so that my pomegranates aren't all lined up in a row. I like them to be a little bit, um, a little bit different. And then I'm going to go, oh, and I want to show you this. I put a, like a wet baby rag in the bottom of my little cup here so that I can just set my stamps in there and, and clean them if I decide I want to change inks. And then I'm going with this. It reminds me of kind of like the, the, the plants, leaves that like Roman goddesses and gods would wear in their hair. Just, uh, I don't know what that is. Maybe it's an olive leaf. I'm not sure. But it looks very Roman to me. And I'm going to use that. Uh, I'm just going to kind of go around. I'm building a pattern, really. I'm going next to my pomegranates here because it definitely curves one way better than the other. So um, I am going to do two in between. Some of this is a really big gap. But I basically just want to build a little bit of a pattern here and there. And next, I am going to use, uh, I think I'll use the fig next, or garlic. What I like to do with this one is actually um, stamp it in gray, because then it looks kind of more like an onion or a garlic, and it will actually tuck behind objects if you decide you want to have it kind of like behind your pomegranate or behind something. It just kind of fades in when I use that light London fog gray. All of these inks are by Memento. You can use whatever you want. I think a chalk ink would also be really pretty for this because it would give you that soft look. And next, I think I'm going to use this pretty sprig. It almost looks like, um, it looks like an olive branch with little olives on it, but I'm not exactly sure if that's what it is. It's just a really nice flourish, and you can use it that way. And keep in, keep in mind that the, uh, the registration mark is showing you the bottom of the branch, so that can kind of help you um, kind of tuck something behind like a pomegranate if you line up the edge of your stamp with the with the, like the edge of the pomegranate you can kind of place it a little bit better I just want to try to keep that center open and this is a nice one for overlapping because it's so lacy and dainty that one back there oh I think I want to get one more maybe like right in there and then um, the olive is another thing I like to do in a light colored ink because it, again, will fade back because it is kind of, it almost seems weird. Maybe it's not supposed to be an olive. I think it's supposed to be an olive, but um, because it's so big, it's like olives are not as big as pomegranates. So I thought that was kind of funny. It's probably not an olive. It's probably something else, but I'm going to make it green because it just is very olive shaped to me. Um, but that way, it, we'll see how it kind of goes behind whatever you stamp next to it because it's um, because we use a light ink. And then last but not least, I've got this pretty grape leaf. And I like to do that in potter's clay, which is kind of a reddish brown. Um, and that's kind of dark. So it does stand out wherever you put it. But I just kind of nestle it in here and there because I think it looks really nice 
with the wreath. And again, your registration mark is the stem of the leaf, so it just makes it a little easier to uh, nestle it in. They are so pretty. I think that's enough though. That's pretty good. That's pretty full. Now, these dye-based inks dry really quickly. Okay, so if I wanted to sprinkle embossing powder on this right now, they, it wouldn't work. It wouldn't stick because the ink is just too dry. If you're using another ink and you're going to try this marker embossing technique, what you want to do is just blast it real quick with a heat tool just to make sure it's dry. Blast it longer than that. I was just giving you an example. So then what we're going to do is push our inks out of the side and you want to make sure you have a piece of scrap paper nearby so that you can um, dump off your excess embossing powder. I just got some... Uh, fine embossing powder here by Stampendous. And I think, uh, cause I did one tag with mom on it. I think I'll do one with dad. So I'm just going to write in my fanciest best cursive, which isn't very good. I have awful handwriting, but this will, I'm going to show you a trick that'll actually make it even my horrible handwriting look good. Let's see if can I remember how to do a cursive D. <laughs> this is how bad it is. D A D Okay, that's as good as it gets, folks. And then I'm going to take the wide end of this. This is just a calligraphy marker. Um, I don't know if this brand is around anymore. I got these at a yard sale, actually. And I'm just going to thicken up some of the uh, the sides. You don't have to do that. That's optional. You can add a few floop de flues around if you want. I find that I get into more trouble when I try to be fancy, so just, just to warn you. And then I'm going to put my scrap paper here and dump on the embossing powder. So you have to do this pretty well. And then you want to do this with a juicy marker. Like um, anything that's really blendable, any water-based marker that's really blendy because it's really juicy will work really well for this. Um, you can even buy markers that are meant for embossing. There's a Versamark marker that's meant for that. This one was called Emboss, but I don't know if this company still makes them by uh, Sukuneko. Uh, so I'm not sure if that's still around, but any juicy marker, like the clean cut, the, the real brush markers would work really well. And if you're good at doing brush lettering, that would look on, would look just fantastic. So then I just want to heat this up and you'll see that the powder will go from, from it being kind of cloudy looking to it being nice and shiny. And look at that. So we didn't have to have stamps that say mom, dad, sister, brother. We can actually write out names and um, it just looks really fun. Now, one other thing I want to do here is just kind of ink the edges a little bit. I really like this gray for that because the gray just, uh, it seems to marry all the colors together. And I'm really getting into using grays a lot more in my coloring and in my art because I really find that it's, it's a great neutral and it can make a lot of colors that might not match or go together very well. It kind of unifies them and brings them together, I think. So to make the, um, to make a little stand for our place card so it can stand up, it's very easy. I'm just going to grab a scrap of a, yeah, that was just, <laughs> I was making, I have horrible handwriting. So basically what you need to do is take a strip of cardstock and then, um, you just want to fold it. I like to fold it at just a little bit of an angle. So you could have just a plain strip. You know, like next to your paper cutter, you always have little strips of paper. So you just want to fold something at a little bit of an angle. So it'll sit straight. See, so just like that. And then just a little bit of adhesive. You could also do this as napkin rings. You could just glue a loop of uh, paper around the back and make a na napkin ring as well, which, whatever you want to do. Do something pretty. You're not on a scrap, you know, for goodness sake. You're going to put that on your table. We're going to be eating. But there, now that will stand up just like that. And you've got some cool place cards for your Thanksgiving dinner or the next fancy dinner you want to have, or maybe just a regular dinner. I'm not... But I think it's always a good idea to make things a little bit fancier. But uh, there's just some ideas on how to use Eden. Again, I thought this was a really sweet way to use it too. Um, the basket is also from Rubber Stamp Tapestry in one of the sets that have a lot of different uh, vessels for you to use. It comes in this set that's called Sunny Day. There are a lot of other things you can stamp in as well. You've seen me use the boots in a video before. And um, and I just thought that was really kind of fun. And the other thing I like about this is that you could do this kind of this way on a tag like I did there and punch a hole and use it as a tag. If you like to make um, handmade food for people, handmade food, doesn't that sound funny? <laughs> if you want to make, if you want to make stuff like uh, jams, jellies, breads, cookies, things like that, it would make a really sweet tag. So it's a great way to package up your um, your holiday meals, your holiday food, your gifts, that sort of thing. I like um, homey 
homey gift packaging like that. I think it just adds that special touch on something that you've made or a meal that you've created. And um, since I really can't cook to save my life, at least I can do this. I hope you found this video useful. Please check out our sponsor, Rubber Stamp Tapestry. You can find them online at pegstamps.com. Check out the links in the video description to find all of these products that I used and to get your money-saving weekly coupon. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.